I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. Let the record show that all three commissioners are here and accounted for, and along with our auditor and our attorney. And uh, as usual, uh, we do have a window of opportunity here prior to the meeting. Uh, if anybody's got a comment or question that they'd like to ask or make, this is the time to do that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll apologize first. I kind of put the cart before the horse, but right before I left tonight, I got an email. I tried for the first time to get a railroad grant, mm -hmm. although I haven't came before you and the council to ask if I could get the grant. It, it's free. There's no match money, but I did just get a letter that we were awarded uh, $12,600 for the 2020 railroad grant, which just does uh, painting, uh, any blacktop maintenance we need new signs at, at our railroads there's four in this county for scott so okay. sorry but i will have the grant papers next time <clears throat> okay but do you, you need that i mean is it something that you have to have signed immediately i need it signed before the fourth and i will not be here for the next meeting so i will need to get with you and have you sign that okay uh yeah let me write that down Like commissioners, the next bicentennial planning committee meeting is scheduled for next Thursday, the 26th, at 5:15 at the train depot community room. Okay. Hope to see you all. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Well, we'll jump right into the uh, agenda. And uh, first thing is the license. Spring C DBG facility project. How are you? Um, so last time I was here, I mentioned that we were seeking release of funds for the live stream facility. But mm -hmm. We still haven't received that. Um, we expect to have it within a week. Uh, the contractor. Um, <coughs> With their, the agreement with their subcontractors to have con under contract within 60 days, that's going to be the 25th. So I'm going to ask the commission authorize uh, Mr. Tobias to sign the uh, contract um, outside of the commission meeting, pending the recent comments and pending the deal with the uh, The contract is with TNG uh, Construction Company and the new bidder project to be completed in 210 days. Come back over here. 
discuss with y'all if y'all had any questions or I think comments on the lease or it seemed to me like a, uh, when you was here the last time that we had talked about uh, uh, one of the things was, was where you was putting that mm -hmm. could it be moved to one corner or not because I, if I remember right it was kind of more in the center and it yes, sir. towards the back yes sir is, uh, that, is that a possibility it is a possibility we had to get that past through zoning uh, I didn't uh, I didn't think about asking April. April, April over there yet on that, but I'll I'll call her this week okay. and see if I think that was do. I think that was probably a, uh, at least on my part too. Yeah. Okay, for yeah. that, if, sure, because we own all that behind it. If we mm -hmm. move it back some or something, I think I would I, I, I think, would feel more comfortable with it. So. I, I hear you on that, and you know I agree that would take up even though we're taking up the same amount of space. Yes. I believe that would you know impact the property less. Um, I'll get with April on that, and I'll I'll send an email to to Tammy after I after I talk to her about it and see if that's something that they think they can get past the zoning. Do you um, you guys have? I think that was the only thing I had. I, I didn't want to so clog the whole property. Sorry, I put the tower in the center of it. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I dropped the ball on that. No, that's 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 fine. Uh, but I think uh, if that's something that's possible, do you think that we could possibly get some lease comments in the next couple of weeks uh, <coughs> regarding the the lease document as far as? You know what we would be in agreement to if y'all got something that y'all want us to revise on that. And, um, I think the, I think the uh, biggest thing uh, for us was, was we uh, talked about was maybe being able to put some of it. And Greg, jump in here if we would need to put like a uh, something up our repeater or something of that nature that, that would we've done that and, in the past. help our 911 and our police department. Uh, I don't think that would be an issue at all. We've done stuff like that in the past. Where, uh, actually put up a tower uh, over near Schnitzel Bank and um, actually built the tower for the uh, for the, the communication company and allowed them to put their stuff on it. So that's that's not going to be an issue at all. Okay. I've got to see no, no problem with that. I don't think uh, that high I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not foreseeing on my end anything that could keep us from it. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you guys do either. It's like a win. I mean, I think yeah. it's a in situation for everybody in the yeah, county. Great. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. It will definitely increase the uh, the cell so service around right here. Tower, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't want to put an AT&T oh, tower yeah. on the Hardy Lake. You don't have to. You, <laughs> get, you get call them or anything. Yeah, I've got no pull with those people up there, I promise you. I promise you. But, uh, yeah, if we could just maybe get some, uh, if, if y'all want to, you know, discuss the lease internally and get some lease comments back on it. That'll get us, you know, there's some stuff in that lease that's a deal killer for Verizon if it gets changed and there's some stuff that's not. There's, you know, they will work on certain certain documents or certain paragraphs of that. And if we can just get some comments back to kind of see if we can come to an agreement with the lease. You got you a copy of that? I think some, I'm almost positive yeah. I do. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, you I got it in your packet. Okay, good. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, if you would, uh, Look at all and, and okay, that, that would be great. And, uh, you know, if we can if we can get some some comments back and, and get that back and forth between the the attorneys, um, if we think that we're we're okay with it, what we'll do is I'll find out from April uh, if we can move that site. She said we push it back in the corner. Uh, we'll we'll go. I'll let y'all know that, and we'll go ahead and uh, if y'all are okay with it. Lease language is okay. We'll we like to set up a site design visit. Um, which would basically uh, consist of me, somebody from, from the county, uh, the A&E uh, &E survey company, um, and somebody from Verizon Construction would come out and basically do, okay, this is where we're going, this is how much space we need, give everybody a good idea of what we're talking about, and then what we would do is uh, we would proceed with a survey, um, a 1A, which would give us the exact coordinates and the height of the tower uh, to be built, um, and a site plan. And I would send those all to y'all for uh, for approval, okay. and uh, at that point we we can start start the process rolling. What's the uh, from once it hits us? What's what's the time frame? For sure? You're looking at probably 18 months. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot. Of, there's a lot of federal uh, federal uh, regulations and stuff we have to go through uh, <coughs> the FCC. Um, there's a NEPA that needs to be done. Phase one of course that needs to be done. Um, so they'll need environmental uh, environmental stuff to own property. Verizon takes care of all that, um, but it does it does drag the process out a lot more than back when I used to 
when I first got started in this. So I used to be out to the other town six months back in 97. And you're looking at 18 months minimum. If everything goes perfect and everything comes back perfect. So <clears throat> it will still be a little while, but <clears throat> for us, it's kind of a, there's, there's going to be a lot of hurry up and wait. That's that's kind of the way it, way it works. Um, What's the high for the town? Uh, I think we're looking at 150 here. And it would be a mop hole, which is the just looks like a fat telephone pole or a fat uh, light pole. Does it have guide wires on it? No guide wires. No guide wires. Uh, and I see through the contractor that it's an automatic 25 years technically. Yes. That does and leave them the option to get out of it. It does not leave y'all the option to get out of it. So that's because they can't spend that kind of capital and then turn around and take the, take the tower down. I have yet in my well, if you're paying twenty years, years worry, worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in my twenty years of of, uh, of doing this, I have yet to see them actually take the tower down. So, so I see it's, it starts out at five years and it's got four additional five year automatic. Yes, so, yeah. yes, sir. All right. Um, okay. And uh, if there's any other any other questions or anything y'all think of between now and then, uh, I've been communicating with, with uh, Tammy over here and. Uh, so the, that technically, the only thing that would be on that tower down. besides the horizon is anything that we do. That so anything, that's, anything else that's going to be on that tower will be such will be horizon equipment or anything. They'll, they have to. They have to lease it out to other people. They have to lease it out to so the horizon. They have to lease it out to somebody else. It would end up being probably Sprint, probably AT and T would end up getting on it at some point if okay. they've got a lack of in this kind of area. If it's, there yeah. will be some additional stuff. There will there. be. There will be. It, it has to be designed uh, in almost every zoning case. Any tower has to be designed for at least three carriers because they don't want multiple towers up in the same same yeah. area. So, um, so I, I guess it, it I guess will be other, designed for that. <clears throat> the last question I have is: There's not going to be anything that's controversial that, that's put on that tower that could interfere with something, whether our 911 system or something else. No, there's interference studies that they do with that and with y'all's equipment when they put that on there they will do a, a an intermod study okay. and um, so they'll make sure because they don't want anything interfering with their signal either and okay. if it would to, you know if they were interfering with yours it'd be interfering with theirs too so yeah they, they do all those kind of tests and I still very very in agreement that you put something on there that destroys everything sure. that happened here in town okay yes, that sir. sounds good okay gentlemen all right appreciate thank you I appreciate y'all thanks for y'all's time get on this one uh, like I say uh, if, uh, if there is anything within the uh, next couple of weeks here, uh, sure. just by the time we come back to the next meeting, we should have something we get. Yeah. Just, just let me know, and um, let me know. We'll, uh, we'll get with the uh, get with uh, Russell Brown, who's the attorney. I think you have his information, Mr. Uh, Simpson. So. Uh, just uh, once you once you come up with everything, you can send shoot him an email. Um, I should be able to get this thing working. All right. All right. And I'll let y'all know Thank about you. uh I'll let y'all know about the zone too. Thank you. All right, appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. All right. Cost allocation plan contract renewal with Maximus. We've got that in here too. And she's gonna bring you a packet. Hi, how are you? This is Deborah Adams. Hi Deborah. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Nice to meet you. She's also a former auditor of Russian Campus. Former yes, I do. Doug and I went to school together, and uh, he was sheriff, and actually he was executive director of the sheriff's association. Yes. Yes, he has. He has. Loss of his son, that was really very difficult. His wife has some health issues right now today. Wonderful man. What I have uh, presented to you, just to kind of give you a synopsis, I'm here for the contract renewal of the cost allocation plan. And to um, the cost allocation plan deals with the indirect cost as related to the Title IV child support. I currently have a contract with the, with the prosecutor Owens and also with Judge Mapp. And I work with them on a monthly basis getting the direct child support monies and that's where you can get up to 66 percent of that back to the general fund uh, in the past five years i did a calculation and the we've had a 66 percent of the indirect reimbursement and it's been 393 thousand three hundred ninety three dollars 
so we want to take it on that. Uh, and so that's, it's been good for the county. Uh, I've been here all day today working uh, with uh, Tammy. Her office has been, they open it up to me, give me my records in advance, and I come here, I spend the day so I can put everything together. I'll put it all in there. I've uh, provided with you a, here's a different county elected officials who have actually endorsed us, whether they're a clerk, whether they're a prosecutor, whether they are an auditor. We are endorsed by AIC. And by saying, you know, okay, what does endorsement means? That they will only endorse one vendor who actually does the cost allocation or works with the <coughs> prosecutor and clerks. And 10% of the contract goes back to AIC, the Association of Indiana Counties, to offset all expenses, and it offsets any of your dues from increasing. It offsets the a lot of the increasing of educational programs. So we have in two weeks the AIC conference that's going to be held in French Lake. It helps offset that. So about 75% of their operating comes from the endorsed vendors. And so that gives a little bit on that. Um, so what he has done here, here's a letter from uh, David Bottle, if you'll see in your packet. <coughs> one right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that's their, their letter of endorsement to us, to all the elected officials. You also have, and this just tells you a little bit about what we do, the cost allocation plan. It's just a, it's a little cell sheet here that has, and when it gets down to the last thing, this is the agreement. And it is a renewal of the agreement and it is for three years. And the, uh, the total cost for three years is a $9,300, so it's $3,100 a year for my coming here and uh, getting everything done. And she's, they sent me a lot of the information in advance. I will still get with them on a little bit of more information and we'll get to that and uh, get that submitted. You're always there. What I'm gathering is on the year 2018, you will receive that money in 2020. And that comes from the state because they will look at everything. Um, everything I do is all under federal guidelines. It's up there federal, uh, their guidelines and uh, federal adopted accounting principles. We are audited just like your county is audited by State Board of Accounts. They will audit our work. I've already got, they've already done an audit and I give them everything I have. We'll answer any of their questions. Also with the Department of Child Services, DCS, they come and review all of our work. So I, everything I have is there's transparency. Everything I do is I, I will sit down with Tammy so that she understands what the cost plan is, is that we reconcile. I pull information out so I'm not just grabbing them and making up figures. I have to reconcile back to the budget status report and I have to reconcile back to the annual report. So there's not a thing, if something doesn't reconcile, I have to find out why it does not. So there's, there's checks and balances in even what I do because it has to pass the reconciliation and there ha there's a proof test on that. So everything's based upon square footage of this building, on head count of the employees, on even your cell phones, your, your phones, your, all the checks that are written down. Everything is allocated by that on your cost plan and it breaks down the little things. Uh, we've actually been able to go back and, and look at other areas that we can uh, grab uh, to actually bring back more money. So I think I've thrown a lot at you, um, but I wanted to kind of just explain what, what our services are. Uh, as Tammy said, I was a count, former county auditor. I have over 16 years in county government. Uh, we have another consultant. She has uh, 20 years. She was a clerk and an auditor. And so we bring together about 40 years worth of uh, experience working with uh, child support and county government. Let me ask you on uh, page uh, three and six here. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the uh, section C there. The consultant services, or the consultant reserves the right to subcontract the services. Uh, the consultant agrees to notify a client in writing of any such sub subcontract. What, what would be a, a, a reason for subcontracting? We have not, 
We have never sub I have never subcontracted anything. We have not. It, I guess that would be if, uh, say that something was not able to get, get completed. We have all of our software to do any little task that I need to do. We have that software. So I think if, at one point in time, if it was a, uh, when I do a, a uh, warrant count, I have the software now that I can import everything in. But say that it would have to uh, subcontract that out, but there's really nothing that we have. Uh, to subcontract, I think this is a, a generalized contract and uh, that is part of just the language that they put in there to have that, to, for that option. But it's, it's just, it's part of the, part of the language that's been in there. And it's not being used. No, it's not being used. No, no. Because we, we do it all, I, we have our, we, uh, Maximus has their own software that they support their own software. And uh, I, I work remotely from home, and uh, everything that I work with uh, is loaded on my own computer. And that's the reason I can come here and work. I, I have a hot spot that I purchased so that I can get on the internet without interfering with any of yours going into you getting a password or anything like that. So. I'll just, I'll just piggyback on what she said. The title 4D, you probably heard that in a lot of the audit exit, entry and exits of the audit conferences. Um, that's the, one of the programs because it is so huge with the incentive money that comes back from the federal awards. That's the one that they always pull. They mm -hmm. always pull this. So we really need to have another set of eyes on the information. And obviously, a, a, it's not a, to me, it's not a huge expense for the, for the <coughs> uh, benefit we get. And this is a company we've been with for many, many, many years. The only thing I can think of that you would subcontract if you got onto the deadline and you had to hire somebody you had to on hire. contraction to come in here and help you get this and stuff we, put in. But but Maximus is, as you'll see them, our main office is in Virginia, but we are all over. So if we have two other consultants here in Indiana, so somebody would easily come and step right up. If I had a family emergency and I'm working on this, they would step right up and pick up where I am because everything I have is on a main server. Well, the obvious question to me, and I think you're answering it, is if you did have to subcontract, it wouldn't cost us. No, anymore. it's not going to cost you a dime. Yeah. Yep. Your contract is for the $3,100 a year. There is no other expense to you. There is no other expense to you. So you are you are covered on that. So over the years, I mean, what kind of costs have they re returned to the county? It is for Oh, is, is there a report on that? Well, I, I, when I, I went back five years on just what we've done on the cost allocation plan, and that has been from 2013 to 2017, and that was $393,393. And that was a 66% reimbursement, okay, off of the indirect cost, okay. And indirect involves the treasurer, the auditor, it involves the... Uh, the building utilities commissioner's budget. Okay, I look at that. I can't do GIS because that has nothing to do with child support. All right. What's your uh, any more questions? No. I was just asking. Okay. I think I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we've got mentioned about the financial win. So we've had this for a number of years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We've worked together as. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a great job about recouping my resources. I appreciate your confidence. I yeah. I work hard to keep your confidence, and that's I'll, what I'm. I'll, you know, I'll spend thirty one hundred dollars a year to collect <laughs> three hundred ninety thousand over the course of four or five years anyway. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, renew the contract with my for the thirty one hundred dollars a year, and that will run for three years. Yes, it is. So it totals ninety three hundred dollars for the duration of the contract. I'm um, taking a motion. I uh, hear a second. Uh -huh. I'll make it unanimous. And uh, have you got the uh, one you want to sign? You can sign the one right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Maybe each a packet so you'd be able to see everything. You've got my business card if you ever have any questions. You'll see me at AIC. Tammy's got a, an awesome staff. She does. Uh, they were there to uh, give me everything I need. I needed another little report. Trina was able, was able to get it all put together, and she got it for me. So that's, that's everything.
You know what? You know that's your staff is everything. They are they are good. So and I truly appreciate that. Not this isn't a service, but a friendship. I'm not going to hang around for all this afterwards. But here, I'll just take you guys. I think they have to. No, just the president has to sign. I will take. I will just trade you. Contracts. We just had a copy of them. I have a point in there. And I will send this back to my um, our corporate office. There you go. Can you put that in here. And uh, I will send that so they can sign off on it and uh, get you a finalized copy. How does that sound? Great. All right. And hope you won't be. Offended if I don't hang around. I have a two little over two hour drive back to Rush County. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to close the gates on me. <laughs> it's been nice meeting you. I'll see you in a couple weeks again. Thank you. All right. Uh, Got the Health Highway and MS Internet Service Agreement. How, How is everyone? How are you? Pretty good. Not a lot of paperwork for you guys, so. I'll start off with hanging this stuff out a bit. <laughs> We have city fiber for our internet connections throughout the county and they have just came up with new pricing and the paper I just give you right now you can I'll briefly go through the health department was at 30 megs down 10 megs up for 165 a month they can now go to 250 down by 50 up for a difference of seven dollars and six cents which is a big increase um, Highway garage, three dollars and fifty-four cents from ten meg to hundred meg, five meg up to twenty meg. I can go through this, but you can see the big increase for just a little bit of money, except for when we get down to the courthouse one, which is this is that's the whole annex, which we share all that back and forth. So, what's really good is with this, the five-year contract we signed four years ago, this does not increase that contract. We stay locked in. So 2020, we're out of contract. So that's what's really, really good about this. So we get a year. Yeah, we're still we're still locked in to that five years with this increase. So we're the courthouse was just a big one. It is $163 more a month. And I can handle that in budget, that's no problem. But we're going from 90 megs to 1,000 down. So that's a big increase, which will dramatically help us all. So, um, every EMS, Highway Garage Health Department, I text um, Michelle, Tyler, and Jill, gave them the difference. They were okay with it. Now we just need your guys' approval and sign the contracts. Or questions. I don't know. That's great to me. I don't know. 100 down, 100 up, 50 up. Or... Well, uh, one thing, and let me ask you, is that, uh, yeah. I, I don't know, I'll, I don't ask the complete agent here too, but uh, is that uh, fiber? Yes. It is fiber. It is fiber. And uh, it's hard wire. Well, it's, well, it's fiber. It's not wire. Sorry. It's, it's, it's hardwired, but it's, it's fiber. So well, in my house, it's, it goes off the dish. Yeah, with, mm -hmm. so it's hardwired. Yeah. And this is through? Uh, citizens, the city's is, fiber ring. Is, is uh, broadband. Yeah. And, and it's, how did that come this far? Uh, Jackson County. Jackson County. Nope. 
because I know there's what I've been reading on them, like for the hundred download, hundred upload, it's about seventy, about seventy bucks a month. It is seventy five or something like that. Which yeah. is a, you know, oh, they're pricing. Yeah. I can't wait till we get it. Yeah. We're going to get it. So yeah. The pricing is excellent, but we got to remember that's a residential pricing. Yeah. yeah but if you true. step into a business sector, yeah. <clears throat> but for these prices. We don't have any less around here that can touch this. And in a year down the road, if there is, we've got a year left of the contract. So, well, quite honestly, I mean, we're, I know this is for government buildings, but um, the conference we went, or I went to in, in Washington, D.C., they, there's other counties around the country that aren't, they don't have access to broadband. No, we're lucky, and we're lucky as you know what. We're so lucky as a little community to have that because even the federal government understands that it's not out there. And and you know as well as I do because they were saying that there's there's hundreds of miles or thousands of miles of fiber optic buried in the ground that the tech companies won't sell. Yeah. So so anyway, I think we're good. There. So. You think, uh, and this is the monthly difference of basically uh, on the courthouse side of $163. Correct. So and you, you've got that in your budget that you can, mm -hmm. can do that. And, and I'm certain that the other resources. Uh, I'll throw Tyler's on that if he needs it. Yeah, Tyler, if Tyler <laughs> 70 needs it. Yeah, if he needs that extra 77. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll be down the couch till we have five years. I'm out of the wall on that. Just effective immediately. If we. We have a five-year contract right now that's we're four years, about four years into. Okay. So this does not add an additional five years. We stay at what we're at right now. But the with this call. Yes, with this okay. call. To our television. Oh, but the, but the, no. the service is, is immediately. Yes, service is immediately. Okay. The prices are locked in and I talked to Stacy Skinner and she said the prices, if anything, where they're getting more customers. And getting out there, the prices are actually going to drop even more. So, and I, I trust them because I mean it did take it did take a few. I mean you can see the price right now, what we're paying right now for that much of an increase for just that amount. You know, my new amount of money. It took them that long to get out to other businesses, other customers where they can make money to upgrade their equipment and be able to push out and now they can breathe a little easier, drop it down and start expanding more. So all right. I'll entertain a motion to uh, allow him to make the changes. Uh, and you talk to you talk to everybody to you, you you did say you talked to all the department heads here and they're fine with that, correct? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion. Mike makes a motion to have a second. Second. I'll make it unanimous. And if you look on the contracts about, about three quarters down the contracts, you will see remarks and that will kind of show you that we're upgrading on current contract five years starting started at 2017 for the health department started a little bit later than the rest of us. So, so you need each one of these signs? Yes.
Which is the highest, where you can push drugs and party over people. It don't make sense to me. 
but that's how the state operates. Uh, so a lot of our classes prior to 2017, we didn't do any EMT classes, so there was no need for the training officer to be a paramedic. They just need to be PI because that's all we pushed out was CPR and e, uh, EMT classes. Uh, so now with us having a uh, paramedic program, uh, you know, I would like the training officer be able to, as the level of paramedic for they can teach that as well. And we run a line on paramedic. So you're saying to teach a paramedic class, you don't have to have a training certificate? Yeah, you don't have to be a PI to teach. So, so that's why I'm, I'm doing the majority of the teaching for this class. But if we're the EMT classes that we're going on, we only have uh, Emily Her and Danny Basham and Tammy whenever she comes uh, on nights after school. Those are our three primary instructors that we have that still work for us. But they're they're certified trainers. Yes, they're PIs, primary instructors. That's what you have to be through the state. It's a, essentially instructor one for fireside. It's the primary instructors the EMS side of it. So with course. this with this new job description. Be better off to have that. Personally, yes. I, I would. I would like the train officer to be a paramedic and be a primary instructor, That's because that would allow them to teach everything that we have to offer, without having to get more um, other instructors to come well, in. If we're paying teach. somebody to be the train instructor, then I, I'd like for them to be able to teach all the classes or as many classes as they possibly can, because we're paying for them. Is it harder to find somebody like that? With the PI, <coughs> it, it's it, the test to get the PI is ranked pretty much. I've taken the prior instructor test, and it's essentially the same lines about how teaching with different people with different learning styles and disabilities and things like that. There's no really an like EMS side, it's all learning objectives. Uh, and it's very hard, it's a very difficult test, and there's not many uh, programs around the offer primary instructor classes. Uh, but it is a very difficult test because you have to sit through the class. Go somewhere and take the EMT practicals over again and then set for the test. Um, and then to obtain the primary instructor certification. So off the top of your head, how many primary instructors do you know in the Southern Indiana? Off the top of my head? Um, I think I'd think long and hard about get more, but right now probably I'd say less than 10. So and that's the only ones I've had so in depth with. They're out there. But they're locked in somewhere. Like well, the ones I, I know of, like at KDH, uh, Carmen Elliott, Shane Williams, all them. That's their director and their chief paramedic over there. They're locked in somewhere. There's not many that are just kind of free floating around on uh, just working a regular paramedics. Uh, so, I mean, I guess where I was getting at with that is that I don't want to lock herself out of getting a person just because they have a PI. And if you're saying that's a certification a lot of people don't have. I, the, the, to be a primary instructor is in there. That, that, that is a minimum that they have to have is in there. I don't that. Okay. But I, I don't think the paramedic I get, is. I, want to, I just want to get the bigger <coughs> thing for our bucks. So if we're doing this and changing it, I want to make sure we're... we're yeah, the biggest bang would have to be a paramedic and a primary instructor, along with your CPR and uh, like your ECLS instructor, stuff but, like that. Let me ask you, with that, with that, now, with that being said, are we creating a harder person to obtain? Because because I'm I'm hearing you say that you now you're a paramedic. Yes. But you can't teach an EMT class because you're not a PI. Because I'm not a PI, correct. Now we're gonna be we're gonna go out and look for somebody that's gonna be a paramedic plus a PI mm -hmm. to be able to teach both classes. Right. So is that going to be a harder person to uh, <coughs> come up with? Is that gonna limit us to what I mean, if you because you if you got an EMT that's a PI, then they can teach your EMT class, correct? Correct. So is that going to be harder for us to come up with that? If you look, the training officer spot could be an easy way for somebody to write out their career. If they spent 20 plus years as a paramedic and they are a primary instructor, they could slide into this position. They're not having to worry about working the truck every day, uh, just filling in whenever we get you know hit pretty hard with runs and their main goal is just teaching. That's all they do. Essentially, I don't want to sound like for the sheriff's probably like, like an SRO. The people that's been in there a while, they want to get into out of law enforcement day-to-day -day operations and get in with the kids. To me, I mean, I would kind of put that along the same lines. So, I mean, they would be out there, but they would be somebody just ready to just kind of run out their, their career. I, I know one. And I know one, I mean, I know one off the top of my head, he works for me right now. He's a paramedic and a primary instructor. Uh, so, they're, they're out there. 
And that's great. I don't know. I'm a little bit like him. What <coughs> five years or something is going to say you're here, not here. Somebody else is going to limit their hiring process. It, 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 there could be, yeah. it, but they're out there because we're going to change things. Too. Right, and, and just like the uh, the director spot, whenever he was looking for a, a social care bachelor's and somebody being paramedic, I didn't think it was out there because typically those don't go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, PI and paramedic. They, they go together more more than they would. So I think they would be out there. You just have to get it advertised to the right people. So the, so your uh, so the uh, advisory committee has looked at this, correct? Oh, yes. And we, uh, Mr. Jones has looked it over along with Mr. Cros yeah, Crosdale. Crosdale, Crosdale, myself, um, Ms. Robbins, uh, Greg uh, Gibson, they all sit on our uh, oversight committee, and we have it was a long, dry meeting, but we went through that line by line and broke down, broke it down, and then laid it all out. So that's their, that's their uh, requirement, or the, what their suggestion as well, I guess. Yeah, that was what we, because we did that line by line, sent it off to uh, Wagner, Early, and Sheely up in Indy. They sent it back. We reviewed it once again, sent it back to her with the this recommendation of changing the title of it, and then... You know, that's what I'm going to approve. Did your advisory board was unanimous? Yes, yeah. We. <coughs> All right, Bill. I'll make a motion. Second. Mike's making a motion. <coughs> John's saying it. I'll make it uh, unanimous. That was in my face. It impacts mine, too. Because <coughs> it, it will save us long. Oh, yeah. In the long run. Okay. All right. And, uh, and there's, there's again, the way it's worded in here, it's a. Uh, uh, what I'm looking at here is we do have it a little bit different. Um, it looks like it's a certified, it says certified EMT at minimum, ideally uh, in our EMT paramedic. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that does give us some leeway to get by. Yeah, that give us, give us a yeah. plan. All right, so what, do we need to sign anything on this? Or just, just, uh, the minutes will reflect okay, that. Okay, minutes will reflect that. That's. Uh, Anything else? I have nothing else. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. 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 Josh Caldwell wanted me to bring this to you. It's a support services for building automation and HVAC solutions. He said he spoke to you about it. It's this uh, Comfort Systems USA. Mm -hmm. He did speak to me too. He told me to give this to you. What it is is, I guess there's a contract with them for the new jail and for the courthouse, and they've only been there once this year. Is this the only one you got? Should I copy it? Oh, he made a copy of it. Okay. Yes. Okay, the next, oh, I'm sorry. 
Go ahead. Uh, and you've got that paperwork. Did Conklin give you that? No, did he bring it in here? No. He said he was going to. Uh, yeah, no, he was going to. I'm sure he was. Uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, live springs. We talked about this last time. So we was going to wait because Dr. Cook was going to give a presentation at the last meeting. And I don't think he showed up. So uh, this is the same same bid that I showed you before. Uh, it's actually handy to act on it. So we get something going on that. <coughs> and Doug can explain a little bit more because it uh, falls in the debate. With, but we'd have to have uh, somebody in there to be able to talk to folks who are going to commit suicide or talk to people who are different issues that go on inside the jail. And again, we were, Life Springs was providing that, but they had a new contract or something within their department, they had somebody take over, something changed, and they told they couldn't do it anymore, so. Tell me out here, what, what are you asking to do here? Uh, to hire Life Springs. Okay. Uh, to come in and do our minimum. To rehire re us? No, it's to hire them, originally hire them. We yeah, have, we have, have a contract with them. Why don't you come up here, Doug? Okay. Come on. Because he knows okay. the whole thing about it, because he's going to be on the They was just coming in, correct? They're just coming in and take care of it. Uh, now they have to have a contract, and that will be for them to come in for eight hours a week uh, to do suicide evaluations. Uh, this is only on when you have somebody. I mean, they're not coming in just randomly. They're going to be there eight hours a week, and they can take care of the suicide. They're going to do one-on-one -on -one sessions if somebody needs you know, talk to somebody in depression if they had a death in the family or then also we've got, for example, we've got one of them right now, it's got some mental health issues that we're going to have to do something with. Well, <laughs> one bad one. And then uh, they can work together with the nurse for the medication and stuff like that. So that's a year contract. It's a year to year contract too. So it would be like if it was signed today and be for until next September the 18th. Uh, so, understanding they're going to come in eight hours a week at $50 an hour, so it's going to be a minimum of what, 400, right, 400 a week, uh, not to exceed 12 hours per week is what I'm reading this. Right. So we are going to try to keep them at eight hours a week. So, so basically $400 per week, uh, $12,000 okay. per week. Well, are we spending that much now? Already without them? Well, I mean, no, I'm serious. Is this a yeah, right? Is this or? right? Well, again, this is something that Life Springs have been providing for us, and they're not allowed to do it anymore. No matter what. Right. I, just, I assume we've been paying them all along. No. 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 That's why. It's, that's why I'm having a couple. Okay. That's why I think we never did have a contract with them. Yeah. yeah. Is that the free service? So, so I guess. Where I guess the money in place. That's the first question I ask. Is there monies in place to talking about <laughs> pay this? Twenty thousand eight hundred dollars is yeah. what I come up with. Yeah. In Fifty two weeks. Is there is there money? To, the only thing we can do is, and Lori's not here, uh, and Tammy can speak to it, is we'll have to pull it out of our medical. It could be paying for her medical, but then their medical's going to run short. Obviously, um, between now and the end of the year, it's not going to be too bad. But the twenty twenty portion is going to need an additional probably to shore up their medical. Side. And just, just a little FYI, <coughs> we're under state mandate to support life spring through our general fund and tax distributions, but we don't get per se services at the jail for all of those thousands and thousands of dollars we give them to the tax distribution. So, so we are a winner. we are again an unfunded mandate, so to speak. So do you think kind of, we fund it through our so taxes, but our taxpayers pay for this mandated by the state. I'm hearing this. Can you make some of this to an in-house transfer, or does that have to go for the yeah, county? Yeah, he has to. That's a pretty big hit. Well, I've heard you talking about medical. Here. Well, I've got some medical yeah. money. So if I had some left over in medical, I could transfer, you know, okay. at the end. Yeah. Okay. If not, you well, know, I have to ask back. I don't have to come back to you all, but I will have to come back. I have to go to council. Is, can we pass, if we so choose, pass this, and based on where you can get funding from the Council, could we what do is I need to go to the council and then come back here? I think it needs to go to the council to get the funding and come back here. The problem is, we can't, from the sheriff office point of view, it's not optional. 
Yes, I guess. That, I mean, it's yeah. not optional. You can't just say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take care of those people who can't do that. It costs us a lot more, wouldn't it? Yeah. And, it's, uh, so, and that's what I'm saying is to expedite this and speed this up. And is that, uh, what I was hoping you could do is, is if you all would go ahead and approve it, and, and, and that way I could go to the council and say that it was approved by the commissioners. If you can I think you it's approved subject to their funding. Yeah. Their funding. yeah. yeah. What do you think, Mike? Well, I hate to put you on the spot, but he's I'm not. He's not. I think he's coming to count. Uh, it's going to be because it's not in this year's budget. No, it's going to be an initial appropriation. We're in the budget process now. We can, you know, put it in the budget for next year or something like that. But since it's additional appropriation, I would rather come to the council before you sign that contract. I mean, it's, it's a contract you're going to sign, so could. Uh, and I don't know. I guess it's well. It is the contractual agreement, though. <coughs> Could it, could it be, uh, I mean, you're expediting, I'm just trying to help the sheriff's department here. Expedite that, it's 4800 $4, $4, $4, $4 to the end of the year. Do you have that in your the, in your medical that you could come? The I'm just asking her because Lori is going to keep track of the time. No. I'm getting the thumbs up from the back back there, so I think. We're at 55% unexecuted for the remainder of what I remember. So at that point, I mean, I mean. Could we go ahead and, and sign this? Oh, to the end of the year, yeah. Rhea do this January 1, and let them appropriate the money, and then we can go 20. The question how much you need to get through the year. Would be 4,800. 4,800, yeah. okay. Yeah. I thought you wanted to do that. Okay. Well, I, I would like to do it, obviously, you know what I'm saying, from year to year, but it would be a temporary contract, <clears throat> a short-term contract. Yeah, we need to change the so, show. Have the life spring agree to change the dates. Mm -hmm. Because it was a year. Yeah, so, so basically, let me ask you, what, does, does the contract, how is it called to be paid? Is it mean? monthly, the contract be paid monthly, yearly. yearly? I mean, you're going to work so many hours, you turn in a bill yeah, for we usually, yeah. It's usually monthly. So, so we, it would be paid monthly. I assume it would be all right to sign a contract. And if you got the money transferred to pay it to the end of the year, then it would go, the it would go from there, yeah. And yeah. Just, what we'll do is... Uh, that's Tammy's copy there, your guys' copy. So I'll just leave that and she can fill in the dates from effective to, you know what I'm saying, tomorrow. And it's, and it's, yeah, it's got a place here. This, this uh, uh, contract they're handed to this day. So be sure you're going to pay for it till the end of the year out of your existing budget. Yeah, we'll have to. the end of the year. Yeah. And then after yeah. that. We meet on that and ask for more. We're meeting on the 24th. They're having, I just remember, they're having a special meeting. Last week in the month, next 24th, 24. 24. So we could do it the next meeting. So you guys can do it on October the 2nd. That's easier yeah. initially. How's that? And that way it would be, yeah, be a short term, it would be a long term one. Because it actually says here, you know, the parties agree that either party or two may terminate the contract upon a written 60 day notice. You know, we're, yeah. So at that point, we can, if that works for you. Okay. Now, uh, I guess my question is, is what are, you, what are you doing right now for this person, the people that's in there? Okay. You know, in some situations, we'll have to take them to the hospital. Uh, our doctor can prescribe mental health, but you don't value weight. You don't, it's, we just have to take them to the hospital or take them to Clark Behavioral and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do that. We have to put a deputy with them usually too. It's really a complicated expensive problem. I'm, I'm trying to understand the value of waiting for the next meeting to sign this. I mean, what do you need help now? I mean, we're talking about, I don't know, it could happen tomorrow. We start running people back and forth to the hospital. Well, but it's, un, it's not funded for a year, and the contract's for a year. Well, I'm talking about just the end of the year. To get him going. Actually, then let's say counter year 219. It, uh, uh, they want to get him started this year. Yeah. And we can, yeah. then I can come back and, and yeah. do it. You need some sign for that. So, yeah. If, 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 if Tammy wants to change it and life spring agrees, we can do it like that. But we can we we don't have life spring here to agree. Shanita's here. Shanita. You don't have the authority to do that, do you? I, I can't speak on behalf of Lance. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, that's above my decision 
authority to make those kind of decisions. I, I am that. here due to my job and investment in this county, but I'm also here as a community citizen. I live in this county. Needed, isn't it? This is needed to have help Sorry. for their now. They need help as fast as possible. Don't they? Yes, yes, the jail. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We have a lot of, uh, over 200 is over capacity. And so the fell up quick, as you know, Sheriff sure Goodness make a lot of positive changes as far as the location book and things of that matter. So there are times in which there's behavioral problems and people with severe uh, mental problems. And and, and uh, it makes a huge difference to have someone in there just for that particular area. Uh, then I think because I see this, this situation you're in. And Bob, you follow along if you can, or help me. But if we may, the, the motion to allow him to, or, or for us to enter into a contract throughout the 2019, till January 1 of 2020, uh, for him to be able to, he has the money to pay that uh, again, if it would come up uh, prior in the next week prior to the council meeting, then you would be covered. You wouldn't have to take him somewhere else, which would probably be a pretty good savings, I would think. I would not have it. Would that be so? Well, was life between the contract? If they, if they, they, they agree, agree to it. Yes, yeah. if they agree to it, based on the fact that yeah. they would agree to that. Yeah, I would yeah, always would, 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 would they, they may yeah. not. Yeah, and they, and they may not. But We're on our not. end, we would be willing to enter into that until we get to and again it, it would be I, I know budgeting uh, yeah. how it would work. Somebody <coughs> would have a suicide over there tomorrow and we don't have the proper help. But we don't have it until the life spring says we do. Yeah. So you understand that so I guess that would be yeah. what we would be yeah. well, if you want to pass this tonight I can call Denise who yeah. I'm dealing with from, see if, from my spring. See if we'll make that work. And if we can maybe it will sign again first of October. Okay. For the year. Okay. okay. But we don't know that yet. So what we need to do anything? Yeah. Right oh, well, can I pass it for the end of the year and subject to the yeah. subject to the approval of life spring. Okay. okay. So uh so the motion the is motion needs to agree that uh, we will will uh, agree to enter into a contract until the end of the year, uh, based on the fact that the uh, uh, sheriff has monies that he can move to pay for that. If Life Spring will agree to that uh, agreement until so the end of the year, year no, for 40, it will be basically, well, for the rest of the year. For the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that'll be coming out of our medical. Yeah. Medical and then, training. now, with that being said, he can go to the council and come back and you you know again you would probably going to need if they agree to this then i would probably have them to come back uh with another contract okay. from january one till till january yeah. you know yeah. through the year and we make it that that would be the only way I, don't you think no. and again it's going to be uh upon them agreeing to this so uh that's what we're doing. motion to allow contract with my spring if agreed to the termination date of December 31st, 2019, and if funded by the sheriff's budget. Yes. Okay. We've got a motion. It's my second motion. All right. It's unanimous. And uh, this here, I don't know, I guess so. You can go ahead and fill in the dates till, from today until December 31st, because that's when or January 1st will show up. And that's what's it. They left it blank. Yes, it is. Uh, What's that 219 anywhere? So, calendar year 219. 1231. This one here is just the same thing. It was agreed upon. This is the 18th.
Not a real one. Yeah. Lettuce. No one. That front page, all it was just where they tried to, we tried to get the, uh, where the last prints had the tax payment. We tried to get them to come in anyway. That's where we the money was. That's where we were going to get the Uh, next thing is asking permission to put in for a grant to the Walmart Corporation again. Uh, we got a thousand dollar grant while I was out there and received that grant. They said uh, put in for four thousand more. We got some more money, so I said, all right, I'll do it. So that's what it is. It's asking permission. I think we've got to cover that. There to sign off on, give me permission to do that. It's not a match or anything, it's just a four thousand dollar gift from Walmart. Uh, here a motion to allow for him to put in the four thousand dollar Walmart grant. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are signing that. Uh, I was going to tell you, the Scottsbridge City Police contacted me and said that they have set their uh, Halloween trick or treating day for October thirty first. Just so you guys know. Have we said anything for that yet, or we need to do that? What's that? Halloween. I know Scottsburg. We need to set something to do for the county. Uh, we've never done it. I don't know. We, 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 we just match up with what, uh, basically, I think we've never done that. I don't think we've ever said really? anything for trick or treating, have we? No. I don't think we've ever done that. If you guys would want to set a date, it would probably help. And the reason why I say that is, is that we're going to keep people from going out and yeah. vandalizing the night before and saying, well, I'm just out trick or treating. You know. Yeah. Uh, so what's what day is the 31st on this year? Thursday. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that would probably be. I mean, and that's the, the same, same day. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Austin on the same day. Uh, they said Austin and Scottsburg was going to be the same date. So yeah. that's that's what I was you talking about. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah totally. Okay. totally. And I think it's the same date that the Halloween on the square. I think that's the 31st. What is that day, Marty? The 31st. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Thursday. Thursday, the 31st. <laughs> it's not a Thursday. <laughs> it is this year. Okay. Just uh, for you. Unless we have weather conditions. There, that's the only that's reason the that. that the here, I, I will fix this. There you go. Yeah, Marge just confirmed that it's the same day too. They have the square on the courthouse square. Oh, okay. So that so be in conjunction with that. Yeah, uh, gonna try. Yeah, I guess. Uh, and then, uh, I think you help him. You know, I think it's a two minutes away. You wouldn't believe the number of calls we get over there. The sheriff's office yeah. says, "What time are we trigger? What night can the kids trick or treat?" Whenever we want. Yeah. Believe it or not, you know what I'm saying? It is like. So okay. I'll, make, I'll make a motion if it's okay to uh, make Halloween the same day as Scott's birthday. I'll come back and check the count. All right. Awesome. Motion made and second. I'll make it unanimous. We'll make Halloween on Halloween. <laughs> 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 All right, next uh, I'm going to bring uh, Ray Dawson up. Ray's going to talk about a, another grant for the Rock It's a JCAP grant that's for their uh, time to do some training for our uh, inmates. What's up with that? Yeah, we'll go the multi twin here a little bit. I'm the younger version. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, commissioners, for hearing me tonight. A Scott County Jail, a jail chemical addiction program. It's just another layer of treatment that we can give our inmates to come into our jail. It's, it's, it's attacking those addiction issues that they come with. So that's what this is all about. You know, we've had a lot of different programs going on already about giving them competency capabilities and work ethic, welding, all those things, but we haven't attacked that part yet of why they're initially in jail. And that's a lot of times that chemical <coughs> narcotics. So this uh, program, it's, it's evidence-based in Dearborn County and in Boone County already. It's been very successful there. The Attorney General is a believer of it. He's going to give us seed money to get it started here with no match by the county. So um, we need to come forth. We have, I've presented a proposal uh, with uh, us being able to uh, ask for a service provider from uh, someone that has a licensed 
state certified clinical psychologist. Or psych Let's see here, clinical social worker is what the level of person has to be to run properly manage this program through the evidence based uh, data that we have from those two other counties. So uh, we're looking at a $60,000 request from the AG. And like I, again, I said, there's no risk here on our part. We have no money involved. That money will uh, be brought down to us, uh, hopefully in the full amount, or we will adjust what services we're going to be able to provide if they're not able to provide that full 60000 So We had two proposals uh, brought to us from LifeSpring and from uh, Centerstone uh, wanting to provide that service. So uh, my, my part here tonight is just to ask you guys to uh, give that approval for us to go ahead and throw the proposal toward the AG office and request the funding. Explain the service to me. I mean, it sounds like a win-win thing. It's, right? it's, it's the word chemical addiction. Not life not this mm -hmm. is a different. This is, oh, it's like uh, narcotics anonymous inside okay. of the jail. We, all, we have these 190 people in there. Some of these folks are, are repeat probation violators who just can't kick the drug habit. Yeah. So those are the folks that we're probably going to initially attack, and that's what the, uh, the courts have said they like to do through probation or prosecutor's office. Those are our, our main uh, clients for this program that will be out of the jail within a year we're looking at. But while we have them in that jail over there, it's a perfect opportunity for us to provide those uh, addiction services. Uh, so through. you have to have a contract with one company or the other? That is correct. That is correct. You'd be coming back to us and probably that point. Once we have, uh, well, we've had the proposal already, and uh, I, I, that's up to the sheriff as far as uh, we, we had a unanimous vote on the preferred customer or preferred uh, provider, but I don't want to throw that out without knowing how much money, because one of them was so much cheaper than the other, and if the AG can't afford the one that we preferred, you know, I don't want it to seem like, uh, you know, that's totally up to the sheriff here as whether how when that would come out or how you guys would prefer to have that be presented, but we really need to get this started soon. And uh, I think once we have the nod from the AG, we can get right back on the next uh, commissioner's meeting and say, here's who we selected based on this amount of money that they provided us. And uh, go from there. I got both the proposals right here with me tonight, you know, and you can take those and look at them if you wish or if you need it. I mean, it was a unanimous vote on the preferred provider. But can we afford that preferred provider? My, my thought is uh, I'm reading here that uh, basically go, uh, the target population is going to be the female and male basically. Yeah, initially, yes, sir. But we can yeah. grow that, Commissioner, on that, you know, and make it for male inmates as well. So. Uh, again, I think it, uh, my, my opinion is we're willing to do uh, send money down to help uh, these people maybe finally get off of the, off of the drugs that they're on or whatever. And I, I'm, I'm all for it. I don't see the problem. I, mean, so I think we got I think. We just do everything we can do to, to stop the problems that we've got. Yes, and I, I appreciate one, that. Just one more, one more stone to throw at, so to speak. I so appreciate that. that. I, had, I had a long meeting with our auditor uh, the other day as well, sir, and she's very aware of where we're trying to, once we do enter into a contract or an agreement with the provider, that they know it's based upon funding. Once yes. the funding drives up, we're not into a three or four year yeah. trying to scramble for funds. We'll just stop the program until we find money. And that, and that, yeah, that was one of the If you had a question of that, we're like a facilitator here that says the program manager or facilitator. That is correct. That will be based off the fact that if they, and, and who knows, if uh, we, maybe if they send down this amount, maybe they send down more next year. Absolutely. Know, yes, or we can find funding through our other resources. That, uh, yeah. Based off of that, I'm, I'm, I would be, I'm, I don't have a problem with yeah, it. We're trying to set up a program so that's very zero risk for you all to have to manage. That's the question that I had was, you yes. know, the contract has to be married to the money. So Ooh. the contract goes away, or the money goes away, the contract goes away. So uh, I, think, I think if it's something that uh, we can uh, put another, get another face in front of somebody, I think that's, that's, that's a plus. So, yeah. I think it helps the inmates, uh, makes your job easier, and probably helps reliability a little bit to show that we are providing more, much help as we can over there. Yeah, I think it's great. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate I'll tell you why he's standing up there in jail and say, we're going to give accolades to Ray. He's doing a yeoman's job, what he's doing. He has gotten us thousands of dollars, just like this is a $60,000 that uh, Weldon Grant was 30 something thousand. He's done. Can't spend countless hours, you know, some of his own time even, 
not even on the clock and from St. doing this stuff. So I wanted to give him a, a big thank you for that. Thanks, Sheriff. We, really we got a good team going, you know, well, a team environment. Without your support, though, we can't do anything. And so we appreciate your guys' uh, we do so encouragement. We appreciate, so appreciate what you do. Thank you all so much. <clears throat> Finding the grants out there. And again, uh, I'm like, John, I've always said it right now. I always felt like if I got to stand in front of the judge sometime and explain my situation, I want to say, hey, you've done everything possible, yes, and I think that's what we need to do. So there we go. So I'll entertain a motion to allow uh, <coughs> them to uh, apply for the $60,000 or accept the $60,000 grant. Yes, and uh, again, based on the fact that uh, the program is here as long as the money keeps coming down. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, I'm out of John's awesome. made it, Michael second it, I'll make it unanimous. How many copies do we need to sign in this way? Just a moment. Um, this way, yeah. And then that'll need to go back to the Yeah. And I'll give you this copy here. I'll keep it. 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 If we get a lesser amount, we'll report that to you as well, just so you have a situation where if they say 60 grand is too much, but we'll give you this, you'll know. I would, I would get it the other way and call my son up. So. Now, you know that. You know that's all the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so far. In, in my yeah. business, I like to go up with the money. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have been calling every other day wanting to know where's our proposal. So I think they've got some unexecuted funds there that they're looking to save for us. Yeah. I'm hoping. But uh, they've been very successful. And that's coming through the AG's office? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, uh, they, they've, been, they've come down and seen us a couple of times because they he said they really appreciate us being proactive and trying to get these problems solved. So, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, next thing we'll talk about, and this was uh, the position description for the uh, folks that will be doing the courthouse security course. Uh, and I think Tammy had that sent off to Irwin, the one that we had. What did they say about that? Because I haven't spoke to you since then. We have it here, yeah. and I'll give you okay. guys a copy of that. Excellent. Um, and what they did was add extra, oh, sorry, extra paragraph um, there that you we did to the general jailer. They call corrections officer job description. That that way, whenever you do get multiple jailers trained and they have to be here, maybe rotated and out of duty, that you're you're good. We have one job description that covers every yeah, jailer. Yeah. So if there wasn't a I think he shaded possibly what was added. No, so here's you know, what's added. I think very it's just first, the, the very first two lines. Mm -hmm. It says perform in a law enforcement to the, to the again. To perform in a law enforcement capacity when called upon by the sheriff to work security, dignitary protection, crowd protection, and or crowd control in county owned buildings and on county owned properties. That's not okay, Bob. Yeah. So on our property. Yeah, it'd be inside the buildings and on county properties is what the difference is. I.e., you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same as the next. Questions? Okay, then. Yeah. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the lead job description for the uh, correction officer slash operator here. Second? No, I'll second. I'll make it unanimous. Uh, you guys want to wait on the courthouse security till the end? Because I'm going to show you it on the agenda for the end. But if you wanted to go ahead and talk about that, you could. That's just totally up to you guys. I didn't know. Since we're talking about, you know what I'm saying? We can wait. Yeah, well, yeah let's wait on okay. that. Right there, right there. Okay. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was is the light duty policy. Uh, and Mike's here tonight, and they kept, well, we do not have a light duty policy in Scott County. Is what the council is telling me on that. So basically what I want to do is, is to eliminate all the confusion. We just want to eliminate the lot duty policy so that there's no issues, no he said, she said, why are you doing this, why are you doing that. And one issue that affects us a little bit different uh, is if they're on uh, workman's compensation, then the workman's compensation pays for their salary. If they come back on light duty, then we have to pay for their salary. Plus, we have to pay for another part-time officer to be able to go out and work the road because they're not able to. So actually, we're kind of paying double. So to us, I don't think it's really that functional to do that. So uh, I just want to try to eliminate all the confusion. 
and stick on the same page as the handbook. I'm going to try to follow the rules of the handbook. Now, the caveat to that is this. We do have some people that have already been granted that uh, light duty status. So as soon as that light duty status runs out on those folks, then they will fall under the new uh, light duty status rule. Well, I think it's the discretion of the two things. We have a light, we had a light duty policy that hadn't been revoked. So because the commission passed that. So we have that. But and I don't think it's affected by whether or not I don't know what it cost. As I understood it, it wouldn't cost us shouldn't have actually cost us much money, if any. But the second thing is it's the discretion of the department head. So the same thing would apply to Jill as an example. Um, if she didn't have any you know, if you have to have a truck driver and pay drive a truck, then Jill doesn't need you. So there isn't any such thing. Same thing with you. If there's nothing to do, and you or you don't want to do it, it's completely up to you and Jill to do it. So yeah. Either way. Yeah, because this this board did pass a light duty policy, so yeah. so there is a county light duty policy that never made it to the handbook, but there is we did pass a light duty. Let me ask you that question. That's a very good question to ask. So if we have a lot duty policy that's passed by the commissioners, but the handbook says that there is no lot duty policy, then which one supersedes? Um, the handbook should have said that we have a lot duty policy, and I asked that question uh, when this came up, why it's not in the handbook. And uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, our HR department and I didn't have, you know, didn't see eye to eye on why we were doing light duty. So because um, I'm an advocate for a light duty, uh, and there's several reasons for that. But, um, but the county does have a, we, this board passed a light duty policy. So there is a policy out there. What, why it's not in the handbook, so you'd have to ask the handbook committee. So, yeah. Which one supersedes? <laughs> well, I think there is a policy until it's revoked. Yeah. Okay, so, so it, that's what would be the a policy, but I don't think it affects you if you don't want it. Because yeah, you don't have to use it if you don't. Each, okay. each department has, that if, you so, don't, if you don't have a job that you could put a person in that is requesting light duty, okay. then that's up to you. Okay. I mean, just like my business or the company I work for, if I, I make that decision whether I gonna, I'm going to supply a job for that person and what his restrictions are and what I can do for him. So, um, but that's each, it's up to you. Okay. That, so really, it's kind of no and void, really, that I need, need to ask. Correct. Yeah. You're, you're not going to do it, so go ahead. Okay, because my only issue was this. My only issue was to say that John Doe come in and had something wrong with him, and they said, okay, we've got some light duty here that you can do. And then all of a sudden, Jane Doe comes in and says, I need light duty like you gave John Doe. Well, I don't have anything to give you. Like, well, I'm not, because you gave it to John Doe. I'm just trying to eliminate some confusion. I'm to do. I, and, I, and I agree, and I'll I tell you what, uh, I know, that there, I know there was a policy for three on light duty, uh, and Mike, I know, is an advocate for that. Uh, I see problems with light duty. I see problems myself is uh, uh, for, like, again, uh, again, I guess left up to the department heads, which may alleviate the problems. But I see problems when you, uh, if somebody's on workman's comp uh, and you put them on light duty, uh, if they are hurt. No matter how, uh, at that point, I think it creates more problems. But again, I'm not. Uh, uh, I think as long as it's left up to the department heads to yeah. say whether or not they have light duty, uh, then I think you're going to be fine. And I think here's what I think: into that or the policy is as you as you wish. Mm -hmm. I think you need to create your own policy. Either you got it or you don't. Okay. And then when people come in, yes or no, it's over. But that's basically what but that makes sense. Make make sure. I, mean, I don't want to see you letting one person have right. it and another that's, person not. That's what I'm talking either about. Either all or none, that's in my opinion. Right, absolutely. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the reason I was asking about because the handbook says there is none, and you guys said there are. I'm just trying to figure out which one. So, yeah, yeah, which one's the one that's going to discriminate against one person. Right. right. That kind of answers that kind of thing. So I'll take care Yes, exactly. Clear as mud. Clear as mud. Clear as mud. I got it. I got it. Uh, that's really, I think, all I have. Uh, so until we have the courthouse security, so we kind of have to. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. How about the health department update? I gotta go to another meeting.
frolic me. Alright, Larry, you're in. I'm off. Figure out. Sorry. Who is next station? Um, first off, I just want you guys permission to work with Tammy to get a courthouse. Flu shot clinic in this room scheduled to be doing that at least for all three years back. So for the employees and staff. Mandatory that they get a flu shot? No, it's just convenient so that they don't have to drive out to us. They can just walk downstairs and come get it from us. And yeah, no, it's not mandatory. It's just more of like a convenience thing for the county employees. So, I said, I to Motion You're second in the fact that she's going to work with Tammy to pick up a date for a flu shot clinic yes. here yes. in this courthouse. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then I have four grant applications. Um, the first one we get every year from the state it's based on our population called the Animal Health Park Trust Account um, for $17,757.25. Um, sorry, the council um, got their approval last week on that. Like I said, based on the population, the state tells us how much money they are going to give us when we get that money 50-50 um, once at um, the very end of December and then once again on July 1st. Okay. Um, and that is um, money that if we don't use it, we get to keep it. Um, so when we have things like a tent day outbreak, we could use some of those carryover money that we carried over through the years and buy <coughs> our vaccine that we gave out to people. So. Uh, do we want to do these all at once? That's fine. Okay. Do you want to them all here? Okay. Um, same thing. This is like the second part in the, the Indiana Local Health Maintenance Fund. Same thing based on our county's population. We get an advance twice a year. Um, if we don't use it, we get to keep it, carry it over, and then if something ever comes up, we get to ask the state for permission to use it. Um, the thing we use for those two grants basically are um, our rent to do our Austin office. Um, we do mosquito spraying, um, and then this past year, I think we bought some new office for our new location. Um, the meat, this one is reimbursable, so we spend it, and the state gives it back to us. Um, this is for two HIV pre prevention uh, positions, and they know that if the grant money runs out, the positions go away. Um, and then it also provides some um, um, utility payments for our Austin office supplies for our student service program. Um, this would be the third year we would get that grant money for 115000 estimated. Um, the grant's not due until the, the end of September. So I don't know exactly how much it'll be, but it's about 115000 which was last year. No match with that, right? No match, no, just reimbursable. Kind of right. Um, this is for our two care coordination positions out of our office. <coughs> um, they help do the HIV services insurance in the jail. Um, and this, again, a third year to get this grant. Um, right now it's 120000 so I've estimated it to be 120000 again. Um, and again, it's reimbursable, no matching, all that good stuff. And I, these are kind of early. I would usually ask um, later on, but they're letting me get classes in before I go on the so it's a little early. But. Well, uh, Questions on any of these? Uh, and the council has uh, approved all four of them. Any uh, questions or comments on any of these? I have a motion to approve. Second. Let me ask you uh, one yes. question that you mentioned that I might go a lot of phone talk. Uh, is there any confirmed cases uh, here in the state of Indiana on the what they call that triple E uh, from here? No, it's from the uh, uh, Mosquito. mosquitoes. I know there's uh, several 
confirmed cases of the deer disease here in Scott County. Right. Um, we haven't got any notifications. I believe it's all up north, like Hell's Heart I area. I see one of Michigan was uh, mm -hmm. at the five. So the yeah, state um, sets out so many traps in every county. Um, and not on wood. We have West Nile around us, but we still don't have West Nile in our county. But I believe it's usually like September, October when we get those positives from the, the state uh, traps. Um, but yeah, we have four thousand dollars every year in that grant to do mosquito spraying. Like we do mosquito spraying at um, some of the festivals out in the county. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and then like if somebody complains, like the uh, Dollar General location of overground pool, if it if it needs it, we do it. So we only heard they ever spend close to the four thousand. So. Yeah. Um. Sorry. And then this is a billboard contract, so separate from the last billboard contract that I asked you guys to do. Um, pay through a grant um, for $9,000. And this is, uh, this is what it will look like. This will be up twice, and then these will be up once. And it will be a total of four boards for um, a whole year. One is technically in Crothersville, but it's going into right there on the Scott County line um, across from Ison's. And then one in Scottsburg, right beside our office, and then two in Austin, there on Main Street. Okay, and they, uh, uh, they are uh, grant funded. Yes. Okay. I'm hear a motion to go out. Motion. Second.
and then check what the health improvements we do. We're supposed to have universal precaution training. We're supposed to have good record keeping. So like if you were to have somebody um, say that you infected them with some sort of disease that you could go back and say, you know, well, then this person, this person, this person's at risk or something like that. Um, you're supposed to have a record of certain immunizations on file for your employees or artists. Um, but since yeah. you're yeah. Are, they, are there people going to be notified? There's only one. There's only one that I'm aware of that would be, be yeah. need to be notified, and yes, we will notify them. Okay. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the new ordinance, how how many readings it has to have and all that stuff. That's the no, We just need to publish it. Okay. I think you should have been under our rules. Apparently, I don't know. No, it's, that would be a, it's a tattoo. So, so, so they are, would have to be. There are beauty shops in town that does that. Eyeliner. Yeah, whatever. so they would need to be notified. Okay. Uh, so but we'll make it. So I was just thinking of the actual town yeah, shop. Um, but yeah, we'll make it known. And this is taking effect until January 1st. So I think that gives people plenty of time. You know, put it on the radio, put it in the paper, <coughs> all that good stuff so they can contact us. So the fees are. $100 for an annual um, facilities permit, $50 per artist or piercer. If the owner of the facility is the only artist, then we just charge the annual facilities permit. We don't make you pay the extra $50 if you're the only person there. Um, a, temp a $25 temporary artist or piercer uh, permit that's good for 30 consecutive days. So if someone makes some credit for wanting to come into Scottsburg and be an artist for the night, they would have to pay $25 and that um, permit would be good for 30 consecutive days. And then we do have a late fee of 125% for all permits. So let me ask you, and I guess my question is, is once these become in place, mm -hmm. then they will be, who goes and checks on them through the health department that says, um, once they've got this, to make sure that they're right. following the guidelines and right. the so right record keeping and all we that. Have, um, we have an inspection sheet here um, that would go over each of those. So you have operation policies, the training certificates, basically it's just yes or no, do you have this or do you not? Um, and then we would give them you know, so many days to get certain things in order. Um, so it would be myself and then our public health nurses would do it. They would actually go, we would actually go, go in and, and do the inspections. Mm -hmm. And how to do that? Is that quarterly, monthly, in the yearly? the ordinance we did um, once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Uh, is any of that training that connected down to the health department? Is that what? Like cert training they have? No. Um, Where would they OSHA, go to do the training? They can do them online. It's just an OSHA universal yeah. caution so training. They love their pathogens. Mm -hmm. I suppose they pay a fee for that too. Mm -hmm. They, but by Indiana Code, you're already supposed to have that. But this just enforces Indiana Code basically at a local level and allows us to charge for our time to go in and verify that. Does that make sense about the permit fees? You guys are the enforcement part of it, yeah. like the state law. Yeah. And what is the enforcement part of it? They don't just. Right. If, so that is, would be um, suspension of permits. And fine. Yeah, and fine. Would that be, I'm just curious now, is that a state law that they'd be fined by? Or the no. Fees are by county. Okay. Well, yeah. Then, uh, next question is who's yeah. going to be the person to try that? Who's they going to go to? Probably us. Okay. It's like an ordinance violation That's for, for the animal control people. Okay. Similar to that. Okay. So uh, that, except they also can revoke, they can also make it so you can't work. Yeah, we can, can stop their permit. So the fees are paid through us. You? Yeah, so it would just be like our annual fee permits uh, that we do for all of our restaurants, food trucks. Yeah. Um, we have temporary permits for the fair, you know, for those outside vendors who are just there for the okay. week. Same exact concept. Yeah. No, I'm just curious. No, all the there, questions. There are going to be those online things. There's no idea what the courses I well, don't, but like I said, they're supposed to already have them by Indiana Code. Right. So it's not like we're requiring them to have extra we're things. Just them over the wall. Yeah, like sections 1 through um, basically 19 are all copy and paste in the Indiana Code. I'll make a motion and accept the I'll second. Yeah, okay, I'll make it. How many days do we have to? 
Yeah, a little table on the back part of it. Uh, the courthouse entrance and uh, slide set special. Movie. So uh, this, yeah, uh, we've talked in the past. But apparently, we're going to be having them shut the courthouse down at some time. I don't know if we're on there or not, but it looks like we're in that direction. And uh, the last time the committee would want to use the they east entrance, and uh, I expressed concerns that that wouldn't be the best option, and I kind of like the front end of the elevator better, and uh, I don't know if I agree with me on or not, that's just my thoughts. So um, I asked Tammy to be an architect to give us some ideas on what to do with that front end. And uh, she gave me some ideas about the health department for it, for that correct? Uh, and these two people came down and they looked at the front end of the place. Uh, they're not having the option tonight, but they're wanting to come back and give some options to us. Uh, on maybe what we can do to make that uh, work with the uh, metal detector out front and maybe a little waiting area. And they're not charging us anything yet, but uh, they will be back and if we are willing and uh, give us some ideas on what they think we can do out there. Uh, now they wanted to come back. There's also some dates if we do this. What was there? Was some, uh, but we canceled. No, I won't have to cancel. We don't have another meeting until October second. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And it would be after. It would be sometime up towards later October. It would be probably I think around the last week of October that they could probably come up. Well, I thought they did come in second. No, oh no, they're right. Yeah, it was the last week of October. Yeah. 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 And they, uh, but they, but but this is at no charge that they're coming not back. Not now, they're not charging. Of course, obviously, we already did some work. That we're oh yeah. 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 Um, I think the, the week, the 28th, all the way to the first, the 28th of October, all the way to the first of November, and then we obviously have a meeting on the sixth of November. So they said they would be available that week or the, the next week, which. Depending on how quickly you guys were interested, if you were at all, yeah, if you were interested, council yeah. was. Well, I mean, I'm certainly interested. In it. I think looking towards that front yeah. uh, uh, as a as a main entrance for, is what I'm looking at. But you know, I think we need well, to me, somebody somebody going to need to come in and tell us something. Absolutely. That I think they can. I mean, I'm sure they're going to want to give us a quote on their services. And uh, again, I was. I guess we would talk to them about to see what they're going to charge and get over there. I know. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. I mean, now, I mean, me anyway, I think now we want to have to come back and present something to us. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I guess we want to present something. As long as there's not a, like a, a charge or something. Yeah, as long as we're free up to the point. You know, I'm good with that. about some ideals around or something I'd be interested in hearing that. And I'm kind of like, the reason I'm pursuing this is because it seems like we're having, uh, we're having magistrate issues and that's going so slowly and uh, I thought we'd get both these projects going and we'd get some movement on it. Uh, so, uh, that's my thought, you got, that's what, what you guys think? I'd say invite them down if they want to give us a hand. Uh, Presentation on uh, what you know on a, a cost analysis of what they think it's going to be. Then yeah. I'm, I'm certainly don't have a problem with that. We'll let you know. You know, and it, cost, it don't cost us nothing to invite them down. Yeah. Yeah. So then we'll be updating that if we need a, a set of date to meet or talk with them. And council might even want to be in on this if yeah. they kind of hear some things that they can shoot some because council encouraged. At one point in time, when you guys maybe been in attendance, they encouraged us to, commissioners, not me, but the commissioners to look at options we'll out front. Um, so uh, when, uh, if you call to verify that we're not getting charged. Charge. Uh, the next thing up is the uh, court use of commissioners' meeting room. Uh, just from what, if you want, I don't care, I'll jump in here. Uh, my understanding is they uh, 
the match for this needed use of this room at times. And they're, uh, I think they're kind of wanting to give us maybe some, uh, us give them some dates that, where we don't come in conflict with things that are going on in here. Uh, and I don't have a real problem with that. I just want to make sure we get moving on the magistrate's offices downstairs. I don't want this to be a permanent issue. I don't want, eventually, we're not careful in taking this office when we have to take to some other room. I don't think that will happen, and I talked to uh, the prosecutor today about it, and they have no intention of that, that's what he's telling me, and I believe him. But at the same time, it's going to cause probably some inconveniences for both sides. Uh, I'm okay with this as long as we start doing this. I want to get moving on downstairs or whatever we're going to do, if we're going to do anything. We, along those lines, we still have John Dietrich still interested. If you all know if you all have been over to see it or not, or want to, but uh, we might be able to, I believe we could likely enter into an agreement with John to buy it. Uh, I think he would also be willing to, he may be allow us to rent it and, and maybe even apply the rent payments to a purchase price over some period of time with some prior agreement. But uh, the, the uh, county extension agent would be willing to go and that would free up enough room that it would create enough space that for the magic to be. Okay. But the other thing that and they would have a good bit more room than they have now, meaning the uh, county extension agent would have more. And we would there would be some requirement for a little bit of sprucing up and fixing up that you can't just sweep it and, and move in there. But but it's but it's in pretty good condition. But, but I encourage y'all to go look at the application. Here, look lately. Here, give a price. He's given us a couple prices about. I don't know the price to purchase, but because he knows the purchase price is going to be dependent on some appraisals. If we want to go ahead and appraise it, we can. There's some cost with that. Uh, if y'all want me to go ahead and do that, I can do that. I, he's talked about. He has talked specifically about a, a rental price, or he's talked about. We buy and he would rent from us for a period of time. But I think I still encourage you all to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no matter what we do, I want He's to pretty flexible. I want to get something done on this. I want some movement on this thing. We're just floundering, it seems like to me, and we're getting nowhere. I think they're just still trying to get a door on our quarters off. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We'll put that down so, I, uh, they have the door they do I'm surprised. I walked by there as you know, I'm in and it's still hanging around. Yeah. Do we? Do we? I mean, again, I think uh, if we are interested, and we probably need to know that, uh, is go over and take a look at that. If we may have some interest, then I would be in favor of getting this thing appraised. Again, there is some cost to that, but, uh, you know, uh, I think I think that's something we should at least go look and I can set the appraisal. Uh, I can start that if we quickly. If we, and if, if, if we could work out agreement for rent and do all this while we're renting, then maybe have that added on to the purchase fee if we find out we want it. I mean, you get moving quicker. Is what I'm saying. Wow. But that's a thought. Whatever. In my opinion of purchasing anything outside of something we already own. Uh, it's not what something I would agree to because um, A, if we're going to move 4-H over there, uh, there's absolutely zero parking in and, and you can say, and I know his, in his agreement he said there's six spaces out back, okay, six spaces, that's not anything, but if we're going to spend any, any kind of money to purchase something outside of something we already owe, I'd rather take that money and I know she's 4-H is associated with the health department a lot. I'd rather go out there and spend that money in a building we already owe and put them in conjunction with them and there's, there, it's done. Well, I agree with, uh, I mean, I can understand that part of it, but, uh, and I don't know, maybe it's a, you know, the 4-H in my opinion is, a, is, it opens up a small space for the magistrates, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but I'm, I, I wouldn't be opposed to looking at, uh, and it's close to the courthouse, and I know that 
judges that said they would be in favor, but I would be in, uh, more in favor of trying to move out the uh, uh, probation. Uh, I mean, you know, here, here's, here, I go back to this, and maybe I'm wrong, but to me, you've got probation and courthouse. We're spending monies on locking down the courthouse at one entrance of the courthouse security, but we got, they're telling me, 450 to 500 convicted people coming to your courthouse a week. To me, it just makes sense is to move them out of the courthouse and to go ahead with your courthouse security. But I think you just, in my mind, I think you, you, you are limiting uh, a lot of opportunities uh, by having your convicted people come through the courthouse we, we on a weekly basis. We may be able to put them over there. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm, either way. way. And I don't they want them over there. They wouldn't, I, I but uh, judges, as Dunn said, that they would not agree uh, to do something of that nature at the county. And again, you wouldn't want them at the county health department and 4-H down there either. I mean, I do think there's some, you know, uh, I mean, if you're just talking about moving the 4-H, then I agree with you. I think that's, that's something that still could happen out there. But I think if you're looking for to open up and, and really do something for courthouse security, I think if you move out the uh, probation department uh, to the out of your courthouse, I think you've got to, I think that's my, my, my thoughts. And uh, if I think I'm right on this, I think the extension officer said they would be okay with moving over there. Yeah. 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 So, uh, well, the other part about probation, uh, and I, I, I don't like probation being next door to 4-H, and I never have one. No. Uh, but, right. If you're going to, and I understand how many uh, convicted felons walk in this courthouse, but they're going to come in here and pay a fee at the clerk's office anyway. So, you know, they're not going to come in here and meet it in their probation. But uh, once you move, and this is my opinion, but once you move probation out of here, because I've heard <coughs> Scott sit here in front of us and said that he wants protection or some sort of security with his people. You move probation out of here, and now we're going to have two places to secure instead of one place to secure. So, and, and I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, I, I, I but, you know, that's my thought. I mean, because I know, you know, Scott wanted, for, you know, some sort of security for his people. And if we move him out, he's going to want that security someplace else. So, so anyway, that's my thought. And that's true. I think the I mean, I mean, I'm just going to add, I mean, I, I, all these things we need to talk about, but we need to continue to talk about. I think John is, I think John is somewhat correct about the fact we, we still have the problem. It's going to get a little bit more crowded in here and a little bit worse, and the traffic is going to get worse, not better. Um, so we do have, we do have a magistrate, and uh, we have three judges and two courtrooms. Essentially, so we get almost any place would be better than what we have now. But they they're going to have to do. They want to use the magic as much as possible in those space. Well, I mean, I know. I mean, I know there's other meetings they have in this room. But I don't have a problem them being in this room any day that we're not or the council's not. I think the problem is planning it. Yeah. Planning it way out, and we know that uh, they have regularly. Uh, Workman's compensation hearings or unemployment hearings or something there? They have um, asked for the auditor's office to schedule them every Wednesday from um, noon, um, the courts. I um, have asked for this room every Wednesday between now and the end of the year until um, noon, which they're, that's their half day. So they've asked. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, they've asked for that. And then curious. also. They've asked for us to share our calendar or give them the calendar between now and the end of the year. And I just want to make this board aware that they're wanting to look at our calendar to see, obviously, when they can schedule. So it will be heav more heavily used, I think, in the very near future. And I just wanted to make sure, I know sometimes we have special meetings that we schedule that we, you know, um, if we meet at night, that we're not going to probably have a conflict. 
Um, but obviously, we may have to, you guys may have to adjust around something that we've already got previously scheduled with the core. But that's, Gray's got a room down there that's big enough to, you know, facilitate anything that so I just wanted got, to so. make you aware that we may have to shift. Well, I understand that, <laughs> but that they'd be more fit in this room than anybody else that has to be displaced for a, a meeting, they could go downstairs. So. so. Yeah. I just wanted to make you aware that we may have to be more flexible per se, i.e. the board, um, with the court schedule. If that's what you want to do, this this obviously, you have your scheduled meetings already for the rest of the year, but again, we have... So you're looking at Wednesdays, uh, Wednesdays, uh, I think, I and think, then they're wanting you know, more information. Point, I, yeah, I think at this point, I think we can kind of be flexible on that that's for, right. for, for a short time here. I think, I think we need to give you permission to tell them you'll work with you'll find out today i'll work with them the best i can to yeah. accommodate here's the problem you all say you want to be flexible <clears throat> but if you relinquish the room and don't give them yeah. you can't be here this time and this time they're going to be there yeah. so you're then it's not flexible anymore yeah. you've given it away so there's not going to be any flexibility well then and it can't be they yeah. they, they got to plan ahead too yeah. so i think that well i guess that one we're going to have to look at our schedule and see where we're at I'll I'll look look. I'm sorry, I just want them to know that we take preference. Preference. Yeah, council. Share with them. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's get to, let's let's make sure we have the calendar, I guess, so we know where we're at. So I will I will try to determine the best for October, November, and December, and then look at that. And um, if you guys want me to scan that and email it to you all, make sure that. You don't see a date on there that we are missing that you all need something for. Then I'll relay better to them, you know, for the information. So. Uh, and it's not going to be any better until we get things moving. So I have a point. I think my bit. Next up is the uh, cell phone policy. Uh, it's that. This is real short. State Board of Accounts asks every year, "Where's your cell phone policy?" It really doesn't belong in the handbook because that's kind of a. a, a beyond payroll policy and we need a separate document for that. I've given you all a list. I know Mike's asked a few times about who's who's getting cell phone stipends. It's in your packet. Um, there's a few handwritten notes on the end of people that aren't paid just out of the general fund. Um, kind of gives you an idea of who and then take that times 12. So we've got a little over $12,000 being spent each year on the cell phone this distribution and I really do as an auditor need a policy if it's dispersed beyond payroll like travel or anything like that so if you will take a look at that list and, and then provide your thoughts later then we can draft your policy and, and get something um, adopted I, so, I mean I, I know we talked about this site and, and, and I, I actually had somebody I talked to and, and I prefer not to have it. I mean, if I can, you can give mine back or whatever. I mean, if I can sign something, give mine back, I don't care. But this guy made a good point of why he doesn't want his apartment and theirs to be relinquished. And the, and the reason being is that he uses it as a tool, I guess is the word, uh, in case if after hours someone tries to call that phone and they don't answer the phone and he says well why didn't you answer the phone and he goes well you know if it's a private phone and he's not getting some sort of compensation for it he can't really force him to answer his phone so and whether that's right or wrong i mean i, I understand it but uh you know and and i'll drop it with the rest of it but i mean i i see where you got to know that or somebody declined i mean i I guess if that's how you do it, I'll decline mine too. Well, your policy could outline who would be recipients of that, and if you don't want the commissioners as a recipient, you don't have to include them in your policy. So okay. if that would be, you know, I just wanted to give you that yeah. list because you'd ask for it. Yeah, and, I appreciate uh, it. So what would the policy say is your proposal? Whatever they they want, but my as my thoughts would just just general outline of that you know the cell phone. Um, stipend policy or cell phone, you know, reimbursement policy or account, what, then you could, you could have on there, kind of like our mileage, you know, we have stipulations on our travel policy, you know, we don't, it won't be accountability that this is our policy that we'll pay $25 a month or $50 a month to whomever and list the departments or the positions that would qualify. 
and then that would be then the auditor's basic instructions just like the any any other policy we have to say these are who you disperse cell phone stipends to every month or quarterly or semi-annually because quite frankly we're writing that many claims and processing fifty dollars times that many people right. a month so well, i right think right quarterly or semi-annually right now the in effect the policy is fifty dollars a month for all these people and that's just so been that's a, what the yes. policy is mm -hmm. Not written, fact, but that's not the, written, but that's a policy. Yes, that's a policy. Didn't you say also that it might be better if you pay quarterly? That's it would cut down on the paperwork because obviously the if it's not accountability, thing. we're looking at not having them to provide receipts back to us that they have a cell phone. And then if we set a certain amount that it'll be distributed to these people, this amount, quarterly, semi annually, you know, however. Yeah. It's my understanding that there is a policy, but it's a policy we're holding back. It's an old policy where we actually had, we gave people phones. Yeah, and it might, so it might wouldn't be worth that. much anymore. No. And it's always been a budget item, but State Board of Accounts keeps asking for our policy because I'm paying these people right up to that federal mm -hmm. threshold for a 1099. And that's the part I'm not real comfortable with because I don't have anything, I don't have justification to pay them. It's just a budget item. I need authorization to pay. That's that you all can do that. I can suggest that you all know your decision. You know, I'll just administrate it and handle it. Uh, you make the policy. I know it's our responsibility, but here. I mean, I think if you said. I move the policy be we pay fifty dollars a month for this list of people. You're done. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I want. Then I would, I and then, would. then any people I want to have an option opt out, they can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I did. I mean, I'm okay with that because there is some here that uh, it sounds like maybe me and Mike talk to the same person, but uh, again, I can see where it would be something that. Uh, uh, if they didn't answer it, then you would have something come back and say, well, you know, or you answer it, it will take you time or whatever. I think it's basically... I think we should make them answer it. Yeah. 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 I don't think you have to... Yeah, I'm like John. I don't think... If the policy is you have to keep a cell phone and you have to... Uh, then if you don't answer it, that's, that's your... You messed up. I think I, 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 you don't have to pay for it just because you... Have a club over it, but I don't think that's true either. Okay. So, <laughs> we're, we're talking about fifty dollars a month. For, I mean, you got, I mean, you all get a little budget calls, but I bet you it's not your your weekly usage of your cell phone. I bet twenty percent of it's not the county. Yeah. Is it? I mean, I'm well, one is. I, I do. I mean, I well, gentlemen, if they're on hourly, you think if you if, if somebody calls them from their work. And it's work related they can start charging those hours too which could cost a lot more overtime over the year that you do have to pay for by the department of labor cell phones no you don't but you do have to pay for time work so that could affect you if you're paying those people that way four hours exactly well the county policy is two hours for any call in so a, a cell phone call would cost the county two hours and that's what I'm looking at in my department. It's a lot cheaper for 50 bucks a month to know my assistant director's in a call than to pay her $45 for that one call that I need to get that answer. That happens, happens with me. If I call her, I'm around, it's four hours. Well, is this something that we can This is just for your information. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be ready with that. Uh, the only thing that here I'm going to say that uh, Geo, you need it. I guess uh, you didn't follow the procedures. I'll say that again. You didn't follow the procedures. Well, I could give, I could give the twelve thousand six hundred dollars back. But, but you are going to give us twelve thousand six hundred dollars, yeah. so we're going to forgive you for not following it. the procedures. I appreciate uh, that. And do we want to give her uh, authority to uh, ask this. for a grant? That sounds like we already got. We did, but okay. I need your signature. My signature? Yes. Do you want to give me authority uh, to do that? Uh, yeah. Uh, will you second that? Yes. 
and then uh, I will. Say I, I, I yeah. want to say for the record, I think oh, you're the one that taught me to do and ask for forgiveness. Is that? <laughs> and don't right? interrupt too bad. I got a twenty-two thousand dollar one. I didn't have time to get on the dock. We so. appreciate <laughs> everything that you do, and I'm just. Uh, but I did have to I say thank you. you didn't I, follow the seat. Thank you. <laughs> Again. Thank yes, sir. We're the Department of Transportation contacted me about expanding Hardy Lake Road. Yes, she will actually be here at your next meeting. She she's already sent me a contract and she's That's our road now. Or a couple people are going to contact me about doing that. Okay, she's on the agenda. What happens is it's a county road. Correct. So the, the state's going to improve it, and they are and they are they are giving some property to the county to expand our right of way. And I believe there's 14 culverts they're replacing. I don't have that. I mean, it may be in this pile okay. of stuff yeah. that I'm sure is really yeah. interesting to read. When is yeah, that going to take place? Yeah. They they, like? She does not have it dated. I actually just showed John today, but okay. my understanding was she got on the agenda for the next meeting. I'm okay. that. She didn't mention that to me today. Expanding, to expanding uh, I guess, uh, you how? Wider? Do you know? No. No. no, they're going to get additional right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I don't know how they're going to cover up the 14 pipes either. Because there's no mention of new blacktop after they, because obviously those are under the road pipes. They talked at one time about the new procedure slip line. Right. That but that something? is not what it says. Okay. It, it, it says new culvert replacement. So that's why I, I was hoping she was actually. And I'll and make contact with her. So, so let me ask you, is, is who is she with? Uh, she's with NDOT. That's a good Yeah. So, okay. We'll get you more information. Yeah. Because. Yeah. I'm a, I know how they're doing. I'll, I'll tell you later how it's going to happen. Okay. Is, there is a formula to the magic again. Okay. Uh, Anything on your part? Uh, anything on your part? Huh? No, I was just kind of. I asked Bob sometime about the uh, Purdue thing, but uh, looks like they're going to follow up bankruptcy. But I don't think that's from. I don't know. Farm. I, uh, it could. It could. Just but we don't know the answer. Yeah, it sounds like they're the, the family that owns Purdue is going to. Turn the company into a nonprofit, and the profits that will be made will be, will be distributed out to everybody forever, probably. But I don't know. You knew that was going to happen. Something like that. But they're the only one of 44 defendants, is the problem. Yeah, yeah. There are other defendants. Yeah. So, anyway. That's, I mean, I'm not bringing up anything that somebody doesn't know. That's national news. So. Yeah. Right. Hey Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Need to talk about that courthouse security too, real quick. Yes, sir. that's what we was going to talk about. That's why I spoke oh, yeah. to the uh, I spoke to the council. Uh, they're going to give me well. They made a appropriation. There's appropriation for the next meeting for two full time uh, jailers and one part time jailer uh, for the courthouse security. Uh, also, we needed. He told me that I needed to get your permission for to send them a proposal on what we wanted to do with the building. If we needed money, basically we've already got the, you see what I'm saying, the uh, uh, metal detectors. We can put a desk down there for that. We'll need some uh, gun lockers or some safe lockers, which would be about probably five to six hundred bucks. And I brought Greg uh, and Andrew here to talk about the doors and the cameras and those types of things. And we've already discussed this, you see what I'm saying, in that private meeting we had. I just need to be able to get your all's approval to be able to present it on your behalf to the council next time they have a meeting. I asked him if they needed one of you all to show up, and he said, no, if you've got their approval to do it, then that'll, that'll suffice. But if one, if, I would appreciate if one of you all did want to show up. And when's that when they meet? Their special meetings are 24th, but their regular is October the 8th. Yeah, it's October the 8th. That's when they meet. That is the upgrade to the camera system quote for your gentleman. This is not what I'm sure you have to spend the money. Interior, exterior, all through the courthouse oh, bill. Is that, uh, uh, I guess, uh, is, it, is that replacing all the cameras? 
Yes, it is. With new high depth, high depth cameras, uh, the cameras we have in here are close to 20 years old, so they're all right, but you can't really make out a whole lot of detail on. We always make fun of the closed circuit TV cameras that we see on the news. That's what type that we have now. This would be replacing all that and it'd be increasing the storage up to 20 terabytes. Right now we have about two to three days worth of storage. That give us 30 days worth of storage so that we have a lot further time to go back and process information. Okay. And is, uh, and, and is this something that uh, I'm assuming this company is going to do the installing and yes, all that? Yes, that, and that's the same company that did our key fobs and all that. We're still waiting quotes on key fobs and up to the south door and uh, push bars, okay. alarms, fire alarm side. Right. Is that, uh, uh, Oh, oh, bless you. I'm just a question. I'm just curious where we at on the dump charge with Camry. We actually, I just got it to where we're going to borrow the sheriff's department's new high lift, and we're going to go out next week because we're kind of fat and it's been hot, and don't want to really be climbing poles when it's hot. But they got a new piece of equipment now. And just talked to Toby early this meeting, so we're going to go out next week and do that. Okay, so you just need one like this here. Yeah, the cameras, the uh, push bars on the doors. Uh, he's already got the phones, he's already working on to worry about that. Just give me approval or tell him we want some gun lockers. I've got some quotes on that already. Uh, and uh, let's get started, basically. We can make things and it can be a work in progress. We can change and adapt as we need to, but that'll get us going. And that's basically the very sense that we need just to be customers. Yeah, need one gun No, no, we'll need a, what we'll probably need four or five. Well, I think we'll have it by the door, but we'll need, you know what I'm saying, it'll be like, it's the same as like you come into the jail where you got the key. Yeah. That's what it would be for people to put the value of the knives and they would take the key. Yeah, they take the key. Yeah, right. take the key. Right. Their prices were the same as I was buying yeah. too, yeah. so it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, you know, Certainly, uh, I mean, to move forward on this, I think put it together, and, and yeah, you have my blessing. I mean, you, you know, I think that committee knows what we need more than anything else. Well, here, here's the thing about it is with the committee, and I'm not, I'm not being, you know, crazy by saying this. You're not trying to be mean or anything. But we were committed to death, man. Let's get going. Yeah. We've already, we've already had our private meeting. We had one, you know, the commissioners and the councilors had yeah. to know what we need. Uh, Let's get it done. That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. at this point, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, that's that's just, what I'm you know. Doing. Yeah, I mean, you know, we know yeah. that we need to get a locker. We knew we need to desk. We know we need to push bars. I, I, I'm kind of confused, I guess. My point was, was we already talked to them about that. They, they, needed, they needed to do they it in an open official meeting. open meeting. Yeah, you you're, you're, you're gentlemen voting to tell us to do it. Well, then <laughs> we need a motion to. Uh, uh, I guess it's struck Mr. Ramoni and uh, <laughs> Campbell and the sheriff to uh, go forward with the uh, uh, what they need as far as the lockers, the food bars, uh, the desk, cameras, cameras desk. Uh, the desk, the cameras, uh, to go forward with that. But is there a, I mean, I understand that, but is there a price for all those? Uh, the cameras here, we do have a price for the cameras here, and uh, we do have, uh, I guess it is, it is for the cameras. Uh, I think we pretty well got it done. You, you okay. have quoted, I think the price is you quoted them, correct? Sir? The cameras? No, on the uh, uh, cost to. Yeah, for the for the guys and yeah. for the uh, uh, courthouse security. Yeah, for the people. For uh, to not, I guess I think that was to for the equipment. For the equipment, and everything that you have to cover. It's all right there. It's all. And all this yeah. falls under that. I think. Well, this ADS quote here for thirty-two thousand dollars. I thought he said that was just the. Uh, that's the camera. That's the camera. That's the camera. So yeah. where's the rest of it? Yeah, the push bars. Push I'm bars. still awaiting push bars in the secondary file from you. So that's one that I'm still awaiting. Yeah. 
when it's just like one bell in the jail, it holds like a bell in the jail, and it's got a key, and you take the water. It's like the air you want to. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, I don't know how to say On my behalf, I'm good with the, to move this forward. I mean, the, the gun locker, the desk, the uh, camera system, uh, and the uh, three bar. <laughs> Or door off. What else are we missing there? That's it. And it, it's, fluid. it's going to be fluid. And yeah. we can, when we get all that done, then we can we have another meeting and say, okay, now what? What do we need to do next? <laughs> well, I think we are willing to fund them issues. I'm willing to send it to them and tell them we definitely know we need it. That's what I'm using. That's what we're doing. And uh, so at that point, if uh, that's the way we're going, then, uh, then we need to do that. We're going to kick this can for about yeah. five years now. And I'll make a motion that we, uh, I guess, mm -hmm. send it to the council through the sheriff for funding. That uh, you know, it's been an agreement that we uh, replace the cameras, we put the uh, push, uh, have the push bar locks on the doors. We certainly have to have the uh, uh, lockers in a desk situation. And we do have the metal detector already. And uh, so at that point, I'd make the motion that we send it uh, to him for them to finance it and try to uh, pay the bill on it. And we support it. I'll say I'll Second, you all going to make it be now. So I'm not good. I'm the second of all. Are you going to we have a meeting that night, and we're in a workshop. It's about all day over there, and it's at Fritch and Lake. And they, the last workshop, I think, concludes at 4 o'clock. Is there any problem with pushing our meeting at 6 that night? So we have to give us plenty of time to get back, get set up. No, no problem. Because the, uh, yeah, the courts will have the room, so I can't set it up before that. No, we're good. No, meeting. So, so if they... And by consensus, we can move that to 6 p.m. on the second. Is that yeah, okay? I'm okay with that. I'll make that. Yeah. yeah. And then also your veteran service second position that you agreed to. I'm going to be advertising and opening that position September.